Hey everybody, Kim Danke, the new member of Fast Track Instructor for Shibboleth. I hope you've had a great Sunday. I have just come in from the backyard, so please forgive the way I look tonight. If you are with me on Facebook, please take a second to say hello. Give us a few hearts, a few likes. If you are a member and you're watching on Facebook right now, you could hit the share button and then put out there that a person could get a membership for $69 this weekend at shibolithdeals.com. And then to put your name in for the uh, referring person and you'll get 5% towards your shibby shop purchases if you would like to do that. So it's real easy. Just put in, hit the share button and then shibolithdeals.com. And if you are on Facebook, please take a second to say hello. If you are on Facebook or in the Zoom room and you are not currently a member, please let me know that you are here and that you're not a member. I would like to know my audience and that helps me very, very much. If you're in the Zoom room, welcome. Please find your chat button and then set it to everyone. If you've got your chat set to hosts and panelists, I'll be the only one that sees what you type. But if you type in everyone, we can all see, and it just makes life a little bit easier when we can see what other people are typing. And in the chat room, in the Zoom room, if you don't mind, please let me know if you're here because you are new or you are here for a refresh. I also love to know where you're from and maybe even who told you about Shibboleth, how you heard about Shibboleth. So let's get to typing in for just a second. Hey, Leah, Leah, I'm a member, but I haven't started yet. Well, we're so glad you're here, Leah. This is the right night. You're, you're here on the right night. Hey, Chris, glad you're here. Awesome. Hey, Nikki, new from Kentucky. Welcome. Glad you're here. All right. Sherry Horner. Hey, Sherry. I was wondering if that was with that that was you. I was wondering if that was you. I was like, can't be too many Sherry Horners out there. Awesome. I'm glad you're on here. And your new friend, Vicki. Fabulous. Hey, Angelia. Glad you're here with me tonight. Hey, Deb. Awesome. Well, if y'all are on Facebook, please hit the share button and include um, either your personal referral link, if you know it, or shibolithdeals.com. And this is a great night for people to watch because this is the lifestyle overview. This is the lifestyle overview. Like if somebody really wanted to know what we do on Shibolith, this is the night. So this is a great one to share if you are on Facebook. Okay, Leisha. Let's see. Andrea, new member from Kentucky. Oh, Kim Day referred. I'm buddies with Kim Day. Kim Day and I were both a premier design jewelers. I was there. She's much there longer than me, like 18 years. I was there 14 years. Let's see. Leisha, new from South Carolina. Heard about it from a coworker. I have set in three sessions this week. Awesome. Wonderful. Wonderful. And Nikki, Kim Day referred to. She's been a busy girl, hasn't she? Which is wonderful. And Vicki, new member, Sherry Horner invited me. Wonderful. And Jelena, I've joined for the second time. Do the su success of Gina and Steve Brzezinski here for life now. That is wonderful. I saw that she kept tagging you, Jelena. That's awesome. She's a persistent friend too, which is really, really good. Hey, Jessica, glad you're here. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started, and I'm going to share a PowerPoint with you tonight. You will have access to this PowerPoint after tonight, so if you're going to do anything tonight, what I would highly recommend is that you take notes. Um, those things that you are going to be able to write down and say, I need to start this tomorrow. I need to start doing this tomorrow, and most of them you can start doing tomorrow. Leah, Oh, yeah. Awesome. Leah. I was a premier jeweler for seven years. I met Jonathan Montgomery in the premier singer's performance. Awesome, Leah. Well, I am sure I have seen you on stage at many a rally. That is wonderful. So glad that you are here. All those brownies we ate at jewelry shows, we're going to get them all. <laughs> you know how we used to laugh about that. Um, okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and start. This is the Shibboleth lifestyle. And it's just an overview, okay? So what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to just give you what the lifestyle looks from an aerial viewpoint. You know, hey, Polly, I hope you're feeling better. 
Um, so if I, I'm actually an FAA certified drone pilot, if I flew my drone up in the air this morning, which I did really early to see what the sunrise was going to look like, but anyway, uh, and, and I took a picture of my neighborhood, which I also did, you see a picture of what the neighborhood looks like from the air. And you could go, oh, that's where that goes, and that's where that goes, and they live there, and so forth. But then I fly that air, that that drone down, and we just focus on one thing. That's going to be tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, we are going to focus on food combinations, one full hour on food combinations. Tonight's the overview. And if you listen tonight and start applying these things tomorrow, because out of the five things that I'm going to talk about tonight, only one of them has to do with what you are eating. The other four can be applied without even knowing food combinations, okay? So that's why I'm saying you could start those tomorrow for sure. And you can get a good idea of what these food combinations are tonight. Good, Polly. I'm glad you're feeling a little bit better. Good. So this is a lifestyle, not a diet, all right? So that's why it says lifestyle. And what we do tonight is I go over the basics. What, it, what are the terms? What are the new words you're going to be saying? When you're talking like Jelena, when she's talking with Gina, what are they going to say? You know, oh, I'm having a perfect day. I'm having a holiday. See, they're going to know what those mean if somebody has explained it to them. And that's what tonight is. Just the, the explanations of the way that we chat and talk and the things that we say in Shibboleth. So the basics are this. We have two modes. You are either in weight loss mode or maintenance. Weight loss or maintenance. Now in those two, there's only three differences between those two modes. One, the number of holidays that you can have in a month. I'll talk about that in just a second. Two, how you eat fruit. I know that might sound funny, but fruit has to be treated differently in weight loss mode compared to maintenance. And three, your mindset. You might be here thinking diet right now, and that's okay because most people come into a diet pretty excited, ready to go. That is fine. Take that diet mentality and let it work for you, all right? But by the time you get to maintenance, you need to have it down that you see why this needs to be a lifestyle rather than a diet. And if you do this as a community with us, you won't want to leave us because we have so much fun doing this together, supporting each other. And that's one of the most important things that we've got going on here. So you got to have it be a lifestyle by the time you get to maintenance. Okay. There are two types of days on Shibboleth, a perfect day or a holiday. A perfect day is where you're meeting all the components of the Shibboleth shield. A holiday is simply a day where you are not meeting some component of the Shibboleth shield. Now, when you go into journal for your very first time, because many of you who have been joining have this membership, a lifetime membership, and it's a, called Tiger's Eye Lifetime Membership. And when you go into journal for the very first time and you see 10 options for types of days, you're going to say, wait a minute, Kim told me that there's only two types of days. Why am I seeing 10 or 11 types of days here? Well, all those other types of days are just advanced versions of a perfect day. And you do not need them right now. All you got to do is get down living the lifestyle, the perfect holiday, perfect holiday lifestyle. OK, one day or the other. You don't even need to concern yourself about those others. In fact, I want you to put blinders on and ignore everything else. OK, I just want you to put blinders on and live the lifestyle perfect days. And then when you're ready to advance, you can look at those other days. But I don't want you to jump into the swimming pool on the deep end. Let's just go in by the steps. Let's go in to the shallow end. And then it kind of gradually gets deeper. Okay. But we don't need to jump in and into the deep end. Let's just ease our way in. So we're going to have a perfect day or a holiday. Now in the world out there, you may have heard the term cheat day. 
And we just don't say that. We don't need to see cheating has a negative connotation to it. We do not need to attach negative things to food. A holiday is a positive connotation. We don't have to be eating just right to still be okay. And a holiday is just a day where you're not getting everything right for getting results but you can still enjoy them. There's no reason to put a negative name on it. So we do not call those cheat days. How many holidays are allowed? So in weight loss mode, you can use up to six holidays in a calendar month. Once you get to maintenance, you could use up to 12 holidays in a calendar month. Now, I, uh, everything that I mentioned this week in Fast Track is just going to be six, okay? Because we want to focus on the six when we're in weight loss mode. So that's what we're in right now. And I'm just going to say six. But I do want you to know that once you get to maintenance, you've got up to 12 holidays available. How do you eat whatever you want and do whatever you want kind of thing and still maintain your results using 12 holidays in a month? Those other 18 to 19 days need to be truly perfect days, not easing off into an okay type of day. Okay, so that's how you can manage that. How do you have a perfect day? You follow the Shibboleth shield. After two perfect Shibboleth days, you get into EFB, baby, efficient fat burning. Let's get there, okay? Efficient fat burning is the secret to Shibboleth and all of these five things that we're gonna go over help you get there and help you get that weight off, all right? Do you know what that extra weight is? It's just stored energy. So on those days where we overate some calories that did not get burned up, they got stored. And all they're doing is sitting there waiting to be used. When we get into EFB, we're going to be using up those, um, those sources of energy and it's going to burn off. All right. And then we're going to teach you how to not store new fat from the fat that we're burning off. And that's important. So you're going to follow the Shibboleth shield. Component number one is water. Number two is journal. Number three is combinations, aka eating in a way that controls insulin. Portions is number four and timing is number five. And we're going to go over each one individually. So component number one of the shield is water. You've got to drink at least half a gallon of water every single day. That's 64 ounces. Okay, that's your minimum. See, what we're learning tonight are the standards by which to live each and every single day. We're going to know the standards after tonight. Half a gallon, 64 ounces is your minimum. I don't want you getting in 62 ounces. I don't want you getting in 63 ounces. If you're going to bed and you realize, oh, darn, I only got 63 ounces in, I want you to go by the sink in the bathroom, turn it on, cup your hand and get an ounce in, okay? I mean, follow it. If you follow it and you don't let yourself slip and slide in all these different areas, you'll get results, okay? Now, if you can do more than 64 ounces, it's really, really good to do more than that. So a, a gallon would be great, but that's 128 ounces. So anywhere in between half a gallon to a gallon, 64 to 128 ounces is good. Now, four of these is your minimum, just four regular sized water bottles is your minimum. Eight obviously would be a gallon. Water is really, really important, and I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time talking about water tonight because there's entire videos in the video library on water, but I do like to point out that a dehydrated body will not efficiently give up fat or waste, and we need fat and waste to be moving out of our body on a regular basis, and so that water will do, help you do that. Okay, component number two of the shield is to journal okay we've got to write down what we eat this part of the shield is where behavior modification comes in and right now you might be thinking I don't know I don't know I run into a lot of people that don't really think they need to modify their behavior and there's a, a pride thing there and the one thing I can say to you about this is you might want to 
humble, have a humbling experience and be willing to journal. Okay. Write down what you eat. If you bite it, you write it. If you nibble it, you scribble it. If you drink it, you ink it. And if you <laughs> hog it, you log it. Okay. We're going to write down everything that we eat. This is going to help us live life more mindfully rather than mindlessly. I have mindlessly put a lot of food into my mouth over the years. I don't do that anymore on a perfect day because I am focused in, I am locked in. This will help you make better uh, conscientious decisions. Okay. So this is, this is really, really important. So make sure that you write down what you eat and you are now a citizen of planet Shibboleth and there are no idle bites on planet Shibboleth. And if you will do what our member, uh, Missy Barrett did, she, Missy had lost 125 pounds and kind of had a slowdown. And Travis, who is our founder, did a review of her journal and she was so detailed he was able to hone in on two very important things give her some advice she has now gone on to lose 180 pounds the last time I saw her so if you will be really truthful and really honest we can help you if you do not write down what you eat we can't help you because we don't know what you've eaten to be able to give advice, okay? So please, whatever you do, write down what the foods that you're eating. Oh yeah, and Diane on Facebook is saying, most of the time we think we're hungry, we're really thirsty. That was good advice, Diane. Thank you for mentioning that. Component number three of the shield is combinations. We're gonna eat properly combined meals. We're gonna eat in a way that controls insulin a.k.a. the fat bus. Properly combined meals keep away the fat bus. Why am I calling insulin the fat bus? Insulin is a growth hormone. It is a growth hormone that is focused on fat storage. There's lots of growth hormones in our body, but not all of them are focused on fat storage. Some of them are focused on cellular, cellular recovery and other things. Insulin is a fat storage growth hormone. Think about how old you were when you had gotten as tall as you got. Think about what age that was. If from that point on, you have insulin running around rampant in your body, you don't grow taller, you grow wider. So if you don't want to be wider, then you got to control the insulin, okay? Because it is a fat storage growth hormone. And we're going to talk more about that in just a little bit, but this is secret alert right here. This is secret alert. And not only will controlling insulin keep you from storing new fat, it will help you with a whole host of other health uh, problems. If you are pre-diabetic or diabetic and have other health issues, controlling that insulin will help you there too. So this is not just for weight loss. This is for health. And this one is a biggie. We're going to go over this one for a full hour tomorrow night. You know, what do you eat with what? Just so you can start putting meals together. We're going to do one slide tonight, but a whole hour tomorrow night. Component number four of the shield is portions. We're going to eat properly portioned meals from a six to eight inch plate using the two hand rule. Now, if you've got a six to eight inch plate, you're really not using that two inch rim, okay? You're really using that six inches in the center of the plate. But no matter what size plate you have, you have your measuring tools right here from your hands, okay? You put your fingers as close together as possible, not like this. My husband did this one day. I'm gonna eat all that, you know, giving me a hard time. But you put your fingers together as close as possible. You move your thumbs out of the way. You put your hands together as close as possible. Then you just lower your hands down over your food. You lower your hands down over your food. And then you look. If you cannot see your food sticking out around your hands, then you've portion controlled. And you also don't want it thicker than the thickest part of your hands. And yes, there's going to be some things like soup and chili and different things that'll be measured in a bowl. But just in general, you know, no thicker than the thickest part of your hand. And what I want you to do right now is put your two hands together like that and lay it over your stomach. Your tummy, your stomach 
it's not any bigger than that. Now, we may have stretched it out, but our body actually wants to heal. So if we start doing the right thing for our body, it will heal. If we continue doing the things that are hurting it, then it won't. So bigger, your stomach's no bigger than that. So that's why we use our two hands as our portion control. Now, most people, when they, hey, Gina, Jelena's here in the, uh, the Zoom room. Um, most people, when they wake up, and they've gotten on that scale that morning that says, oh, man, I have got to uh, lose some weight. Most people, Jessica, soup is typically going to be about a, a cup to a cup and a half. Um, most people, when they think they need to lose weight, they automatically go, I got to eat less. OK, that that is kind of inherent. But this how do, how do you know what to eat less? How do you know? How do you measure that? Do you know that Shibboleth gives us a way to measure moderation? You know, you've heard do everything in moderation. Whose moderation? My moderation could be different than my husband's, could be different than my son's, could be different than you. Whose moderation? You got to have standards by which to measure the moderation. And that's what Shibboleth gives you, gives you those standards. We don't eat more than what fits underneath our two hands. And also, Jessica, if there's some other odd thing, it'll say in the food library how much you can have of it if it's not just what would go on a plate. The food library is very specific. I love the food library because it keeps you from wandering and wandering. And I say keeps you from wandering and wandering in the grocery store. But when you're at home, you no longer have to wonder about things. You just go to the food library and see exactly what it says and go from there. So if you're taking notes, write this down. There's 3,500, 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. If you want to get one pound of fat burned and off your body, you've got to be in a 3,500 calorie deficit. That does not happen overnight because we need to eat to live. So that doesn't happen overnight. That happens over a course of days and consistently doing it. Well, when you start applying the portion control part in conjunction with the combinations part, you are burning fat but not storing new fat on top of that. See, a lot of people, they know they need to eat less, but they don't know that they don't need to be collecting new fat with insulin control. And so they are burning fat, but then they're collecting it. And it's just a vicious cycle, burning, collecting, burning, collecting. Ooh, I don't like that. So now we just don't do that. We just don't do that. We put this all together and it works. Okay, so I've been over four of the five. Water, y'all can start that tomorrow. Number two, journaling. You can start that tomorrow, even if what you are eating, you don't even know if it's approved. You can still write it down, okay? Number three, combinations. I think that you could even start that tomorrow at its basic form after what we go over tonight, but you know, you, you're going to have tomorrow night too. And if you've looked over the welcome packet and those other things, you know, you'll have a better idea of that one. Portion control. You can start that tomorrow. These are the four things that you have to meet in order to say that you have had a perfect day. Um, there is one more though, timing. This one is to optimize everything else that you do. And if you don't hit it quite right, it's still gonna be a perfect day. As long as you've gotten the water, the journal, eaten in the, the right combinations and your portions. If you do that, you're good to go. But number five is, hey, Lynn, um, number five is timing. You can eat up to three meals a day and four to six hours apart is really best. So let's just say that you eat breakfast at eight and you eat lunch at noon. There's a four hour window. Then maybe you eat dinner at six. There's a six hour window. That would be great. Um, in moments of what Travis calls mental weakness, because if we really, really wanted to, we could make it from breakfast to lunch, lunch to dinner, dinner to bedtime, but we're used to eating more. We're used to giving ourselves a little bit of mouth pleasure because it really is just about taste and our taste buds get all excited about eating that and it lasts about five seconds or five minutes and then it's over and then we're stuck with what we ate. So if you have that moment though, you can utilize things called freebies, 
up to one extra in a day and up to one snack in a day. So you can utilize these things and you can still be inefficient fat burning and you can still have a perfect day. Keep in mind though, that we need to stop grazing. This guy, he grazes, okay, this cow. <laughs> he grazes. Now this cow was designed with a stomach that has four chambers in it that is designed for grazing. We only have one stomach, one chamber. We don't, we, we weren't designed for grazing. See, grazing is actually hurting our metabolism as well as our digestive system. I don't know if y'all are aware, but there's a lot of digestive issues out there in the world. Well, it's because we are overworking the digestive machine. Think about a machine. If you never give a certain machine a break, the machine is eventually going to break down. And that's the same way with our digestive system. If we never give it a break from digesting, it's, it's going to break down. And then we're going to have to give it a break from digesting. Might as well start right now, okay? So you can have up to three meals a day, four to six hours apart. But let's say that you ate at a eight o'clock and then you got to work and y'all were going to go to lunch at noon, but it ended up happening at 11. That's just three hours, not four. But if you still on that day got your water in, you still ate in the right food combinations, you still wrote down what you ate and you still did the portions that is, you know, just eating at three hours, not four is going to um, still be OK. All right. That's not going to throw you off of having a perfect day. Now, if you have more than one extra or more than one snack that would throw you off of having a perfect day. And that has less to do with the timing part and more to do with component number four portions. Okay. You would have overeaten the portion. Therefore you call it, you don't call it a perfect day anymore. Okay. So it, that, that's the guidelines. I've just gone over the, the things that make a great and wonderful day. It's actually really nice to know what your daily objectives are. And all of the things that I've gone over, they are very concrete things. You can, you know what they are, you can take action on them, you can measure them, and you'll know whether or not you met them. So, you know, they aren't just conceptual things. These are things you can do and make sure you've done them. Okay, so now let's talk about a properly combined meal. How do you put together a properly combined meal? Well, if you stick with me for these sat Sunday through Saturday night, you are going to hear me say just about every night this week, I hope you're making your lists of favorites. You need to know what you personally like in all of these categories. There's just seven. But you got to know what you like in lean proteins and in fibrous carbs and energy carbs and so forth. See, on Planet Shibboleth, you don't have to eat anything that you don't like. But we do need to know what you like that's approved so that you can make meals. So if you have paper with you right now, you might want to draw out one through seven at the top. And if you hear me say any foods tonight that are in certain categories and you like them, write them down in those categories so that you'll know. But you can look at the new member food library and get a nice list, the new member grocery list, and get a nice list. So there's different places in the uh, fast track laps that you can pull ideas from for your favorites. But there's seven categories of food. The foods, whole foods that roam the earth, swim in the ocean, grow from the ground, those foods and some manufactured foods make their way into these categories based on their nutritional profile. Their nutritional profile determines how they respond in your body. So a lean protein responds very differently in your body from an energy carb, very differently. Okay, so you just you want to make sure that you're aware of that and what foods go in these, these lists. So category one is a lean protein, and you'll see the abbreviation LP. Category two is a fibrous carb, FC. Category three is an energy carb, EC, sometimes called complex carb. So you might see that. Most of the time you're going to see energy carb EC though. Category four, protein plus fat, PF. Category five, fruit, 
FR, also known as antioxidant carb or AC. Most of the time you're going to see fruit, but every once in a while you might see an AC thrown in there. And I want you to know that's just fruit. It's not any other category. It's just the fruit one. Category six, superfood, SF. Category seven, shellfish, SHF, which is really just a lean protein. So we got category one through category seven. The bookends of the categories are lean proteins. Now, in lean protein, category one, there's fish. If you like fish, write fish down. There's fish. But when you come down here to shellfish, this is all the other critters besides fish that live in water, whether or not they have a shell. They go right here in shellfish. For example, octopus doesn't have a shell, but that's where we'd put it. We put it right there. So category one and category seven are lean proteins. And then you've got, uh, but in, lean, in this little lean protein category, you also might find egg whites and chicken breasts. So write those down if you like those. Fibrous carbs, this is where you're gonna find uh, green beans and broccoli and over 60 approved bread or bread type items. We do not exclude any macronutrients on Shibboleth. We don't think that would make a very sustainable lifestyle. Energy carbs, this is where you're gonna find corn and potatoes and um, lima beans. Category four, protein plus fat, whole eggs, all cuts of steak, dark meat, chicken, fruit, all fruit is in fruit. Superfoods, nut butters, nuts, seeds, black beans, and then shellfish, crab, lobster, shrimp, and so forth. Okay, so those are just some examples. So as you're thinking about those foods, you can kind of see how they have similarities and they have similar nutritional profiles. Okay, so if you did write one through seven across the top of a piece of paper, I now want you to circle five of those. Circle number one, number two, number four, number six, and number seven, you should not have three or five, number three and five, we're not circling those. The ones that we just circled or you just circled can be eaten alone. They don't even have to be eaten combined. You can eat chicken breast by itself. You could eat broccoli by itself. You could eat eggs by themselves. You could eat a spoonful of peanut butter by itself. You could eat shrimp by itself. So those Five of the seven categories do not even have to be combined. Why is it important that you know that? Because not every eating situation that you find yourself in is going to be a glorious, wonderfully cooked and presented meal. I mean, it's just not going to happen breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. You may end up in a place where you're like, wait a minute, all oh, that stuff's going to bring the fat bus, but oh, they got boiled shrimp. I'll eat the boiled shrimp. I mean, you know, it's it's just you might end up at places like that. And so you need to know what to do in those situations. We try to teach you how to eat in all different situations and make a good decision for efficient fat burning. Keep yourself perfect, okay? We're going for results. All right, so we did not circle category three or category five. If you want to eat an energy carb, which is a category three, it must be eaten with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. That lean protein could come from category one or category seven, okay? So let's just imagine that you want to eat some corn, okay? You're gonna use your two hands. Your corn would sit about right there. So you got your corn, okay? But I want you to start training your brain to any time you think of eating one of your favorite energy carbs that it goes ding, ding, ding. I need to eat that with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. It's not just a I should, it's a I must in order to have a perfect day. So we're gonna put the corn about right there. It's gonna be about a quarter of a cup. Let me tell you what happens when you eat that corn. See, corn doesn't really have any fat in it. 
It's not that there's fat in corn, but corn is the catalyst to fat storage if you were to eat fat with it. And you need to eat it with foods that are going to neutralize that fat storing product, insulin, okay? So corn, and you know you need to eat it with a lean protein and a fibrous carbs, and we'll keep it super simple. Chicken breast, green beans. Okay, let's, do, let's tell the story of this plate. You eat the corn. Corn is going to elevate your blood sugar. Your pancreas is going to secrete insulin to deal with the blood sugar elevation. Because that's another thing insulin does. Insulin actually has a job of blood sugar uh, control. It controls blood sugar. But if it, it has that secondary thing of fat storage. But now that you know you need to eat this with a lean protein and a fibrous carb, the protein in the chicken breast that you chose and the fiber in the green beans that you chose neutralize the insulin release that came out because of the corn. You just used medicine, I mean food as medicine. You just need, used food as medicine. Isn't that exciting to know? It is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Think about that meal too. There's no fat in that meal. So there, even though you had a little bit of insulin come out, there was no fat to get stored. You went ahead and neutralized that insulin with the eating of that meal. So it's not going to store fat later either. Okay. It is brilliant and absolutely amazing. Okay. Fruit. So let's say that you want to eat some fruit. Maybe you want to have some strawberries for breakfast. You could have an egg white spinach omelet. Egg whites are your protein. Spinach is your fibrous carb. It is genius, Lynn, and it excites me so much when Eldon is over on Facebook saying, Shabola, this is genius. It really, really is. It's amazing, and it's so doable, too. We enjoy what we do as well. Um, I personally enjoy knowing that I'm putting, like, I've got a science project going on in my body, but I'm going to get the blue ribbon. I'm going to win the science fair. I'm going to win it because I know what I'm doing now. Um, but let's say that you want to have those berries. Maybe you make yourself an egg white spinach omelet. Well, if you don't like what I just said, egg white spinach omelet, we'll figure out a different lean protein, okay? A different fibrous carb. That's the thing. It's whatever you like, it's just in these right combinations. Um, and then now that you know that you must eat energy carb or fruit with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. Now, remember when I said in the beginning, there's two modes, weight loss mode and maintenance mode. There's three differences between the two modes. One, the number of holidays that you can have in a month. Two, how you eat fruit. Well, in weight loss mode, you are in a different nutritional situation than in maintenance. You've got to make sure that you are super controlling that insulin during weight loss mode in order to get all the results that you want. So fruit, even though it's good for you, see right here, antioxidant, good for you. Antioxidants are good for you. It goes around and pick up but the free radicals. That's what antioxidants do. And all those beautiful colors in fruit, there's those phytonutrients in there. So they're good for you. But if you are trying to control insulin, which we are, fruit is a natural sugar. It's fructose. It's a natural sugar. Your body doesn't say, oh, no, that was fruit. I'm not going to release insulin because that's also good for them. No, it still releases the insulin. But if you're in weight loss mode, you treat fruit properly. And if you are, um, I mean, by the proper combination, but once you get to maintenance, you can have fruit as a snack by itself if you want to in maintenance only. So just keep that in mind. That's the one difference between um, fruit. Now let's talk about this one. Category four, protein plus fat. Now you see that word fat there? That is not a bad word. Fat is used in our body for certain functions. And when we eat protein plus fat in a portion controlled way, it will get used up as energy and dissipate as heat. So you actually are okay eating that in a portion controlled way. But what you do not eat 
protein plus fat with are foods that bring an insulin release because of their makeup. So if you're taking notes, please write this down. We are not going to eat category four protein plus fats with your energy carbs, your fruit, or your superfoods. So there's three categories that we do not eat protein plus fat with. Energy carbs, fruit, or superfoods. And the superfood, the reason that that is, and this is a good thing to write down too, is in superfoods, there's all four macronutrients. You've got water in there, you've got protein, you've got fat, and you've got carbs. So you have all four macronutrients. And yes, we call water a macronutrient on planet Shabolith. It's actually the most important one, and it's zero calorie. Then I said them in order of importance, protein, fat, carbs. So superfood has all four of those in it. So therefore, we're not going to eat that with a protein plus fat. Um, now, you could have protein plus fat with a lean protein, or you could have protein plus fat with shellfish. Let's say you wanted surf and turf. So maybe you do a lobster tail, you know, they've got to fit under your hand, okay? And you're splitting it between two flavors. So you still needs to fit. It's still your protein hand, okay? This is your protein hand. Maybe you put some lobster tail there and some steak there. And then over here, maybe you do some asparagus or broccoli or green beans or something like that. You can do that. So you can have more than um, one protein source. It just still goes under here. So now let's look over here at this chart because you're going to see this chart in your fast track laps in two places. And lap one is a new member chart. And then in lap six, I'll show you an advanced one. Okay. But they've got the blue column, yellow column, and red. I always start at the blue column because this is fast weight loss. Yellow is faster weight loss. In red, you are blowtorch and fat like you'd blowtorch butter if you stay right there. So let's look at this blue column. See, I want to read this to you so you understand how it reads. It's very important. We are not doing math here. This is not some kind of weird algebra. Cat, this number right here is not quantity either. Like that six, that's not quantity. This two is not quantity. This is the category number. And that plus sign does not mean we're adding. It means we're eating it with. So let me read this. Category one, lean protein, eaten with. Category six, superfood, eaten with. Category two, fibrous carb. So this actually might look like pork tenderloin, um, pinto beans and collards. That's what that would be. Okay. And then if you come down right here, this is showing you that maybe you want to have some chicken breast, category one lean protein, eaten with category seven shellfish. So maybe you had a little bit of chicken breast and a little bit of shrimp, and then you had some broccoli or a side salad. Okay. Now let's look at the yellow column. I'm not going to really read those because you've got, you, you, you understand now what that means. MR stands for meal replacement and MCT stands for medium chain triglyceride, which I'm going to go over um, in, in just two, two more slides from now, medium chain triglyceride. Now, do you see how right here it says phase one, first seven to 10 days, and it says best phase one combinations. And you're going to notice it doesn't have any energy carbs or fruit in here. Technically, you can have energy carbs and fruit from the very beginning. But if you were willing to not have energy carbs and fruit for your first seven to 10 days, then you would even get better results. OK, so that's why this one is listed this way. But if you scooted on over to lap six and wanted to look at that advanced combination chart, you could use that one, too. This one, you know how you know how in life there's good, better and best. This would be best. And then you just keep learning more and you can add those in. So I like to explain the blue, yellow, and red is like this. We're going to go to the beach and we're all going to get in our separate cars and we're going to drive to the beach. Hey, Tammy. And the blue column is like you've got on the scenic route to the beach. The yellow column you got on the highway. The red column you got on the interstate. Are we all going to end up at the beach? Yes. Now, will some of us get to the beach before the others? We will, but we're all going to get to the beach. So. You, but, but if I think about a beach trip, 
I'm not just on the scenic route. I am not just on the highway. I am not just on the interstate. Um, it's a little bit of all of this as you're taking a trip. And so this is a journey that you're on and you can enjoy food and meals out of all of these. If you are willing to stick in the red and yellow most of the time and throw in some blue columns every once in a while, maybe that's like a weekend meal. You feel like you are really living it up by adding some new things in there, but you're still having a perfect day, then that'd be great. That'd be really great. So there's just good, better, and best in everything. Um, and let's do a little recap real quick. Category one, lean protein with category seven shellfish eaten with category two fibrous carb, cooked up in MCT oil are the fastest fat burning combinations. It is the addition of the MCT oil that makes it be the fastest fat burning combination. If you want to eat a category three energy carb or category five fruit, you must eat it with a lean protein from either category one or category seven and a category two. It's not either or. It's you must eat it with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. And we just don't eat category fours, which are your protein plus fats with anything that's going to bring an insulin release. And that's going to be your energy carbs, your fruit, and your superfoods. And all meat at a restaurant should be considered a category four. All meat at a restaurant is a category four. Why is that? Well, let's say that at home, you would cook a piece of chicken breast in the appropriate oils, which we're going to talk about next. Well, when you go out to a restaurant, I can guarantee you they are not using the oils that you're about to start using. And so if they cook chicken, if you cook chicken breast at home, it would be, it could be a lean protein. But if you cook, if you, if you go out to a restaurant and they've used olive oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, which are not approved on Shibola's Perfect Days, we do allow that for restaurants and we allow that because it makes the lifestyle sustainable and you've got to make judgment calls at certain places. But basically they've taken chicken breast, which is a lean protein and they've cooked fat into it. Therefore it's now a protein plus fat. So I hope that makes sense. So if you consider all meat at a restaurant at four, it'll keep you safe. And then you just want, would not order it with, ener with any energy carbs, fruit or superfoods you would stick to a fibrous carb in that situation. Okay, approved cooking oils. So what shibboleth is, it's really just some simple swaps. Maybe you find that the loaf bread that you're using does not work. Maybe you find that the tortilla that you're using does not work. Maybe you find that the oatmeal you're using does not work. Guess what? We have alternatives, regular alternatives right there in the grocery store. So the food library is there. It's going to give you all those simple swaps. The other thing you're simply swapping is what you eat together on your plate. The next big simple swap in Shibboleth is your cooking oils. So the one we want you to use is 100% MCT oil, medium chain triglyceride. A 100% MCT oil, medium chain triglyceride has almost no propensity to be stored on your body as fat. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want to store any fat. So MCT oil has almost no propensity to be stored on your body as fat. Let's compare it to what we were using before, which are long chain triglycerides. Long chain triglycerides have a great propensity to be stored on your body as fat. That's canola oil, vegetable oil, olive oil, pretty much all those other oils are, are long chain triglycerides and they have a great propensity to be stored on your body as fat. In fact, in two and a half years, I have not bought any other kind of oil except for the medium chain triglyceride right here. And I think I've only bought three containers of that just because you only use it for certain purposes. And I'll go over that in a second. The next oil that you could use is coconut oil. Coconut oil is 66% MCTs, but it's not 100. We want you to use 100 to make it be the fastest fat burning combination. Now, if you can't get your hands on some MCT oil right away, honestly, what I do to make it easy is I order it from the Shibboleth store. It's the brand name is called Zero Drag, Zero Drag. Um, 
So I just order it from them because as a perk of your membership, you get 20% off all of the stuff in the store and $30 or more ships for free. And then we're going to talk about some other things this week that you might want to order. If, if you are going in there tonight and you're looking at that and you want to get that zero drag, type in recipe starter kit because that would also get you ghee butter and it would get you carb quick, okay, which is our version of flour or bisquick. And that's a really nice little thing to have. You may not even know what you're going to do with it yet, but this is the type thing where you have just staples in your pantry that you just need. That when you find a recipe that you want to make, that you don't go, Dad, gum it. If I had that ghee butter, I could make that. Or if I had that carb quick, I could make that. Well, might as well go ahead and get it. Okay, you're going to need it at some point. Might as well go ahead now and get it. But Zero Drag is the name of the MCT oil. Um. And there's MCT oil out in other stores. I'm just saying it's super easy. It'll save you a lot less driving around and hunting for the right kind. You could also use ghee butter. Now, what is ghee butter? It's just butter that has been clarified, meaning all of the milk solids have been pulled out of it. Well, when you pull the milk solids out, you're left with just the natural fat, and it's about 25% MCTs. And then you can also use zero calorie cooking spray. So here's the way I decide. If I am cooking a lean protein or shellfish, category one or category seven, I use MCT oil. If I am cooking protein plus fat, it's already got fat in it. I do not need to add additional fats. I use zero calorie cooking spray. Let me give you a little example. If I were cooking an egg white spinach omelet, I would use a little bit of MCT oil. If I was cooking a whole egg spinach omelet, I'd use zero calorie cooking spray. Um, and then I use ghee butter when I am making a recipe that calls for butter, but I don't just spread ghee butter on a piece of toast. I would use Brummel and brown yogurt butter for that. Or if I wanted a calorie free butter, I would use the, I can't believe it's not butter spray. So you can do, do that. Now, when you're doing medium chain triglyceride, you don't want to use more than a tablespoon per serving. So let's say that you're cooking up yourself a piece of chicken. You could put one tablespoon in the pan and, you know, cook your chicken. But if you're making four pieces for the family, you could put four tablespoons in there and use that. Um, oh, yeah, it does not have to be zero drag. It can be any other 100% MCT oil. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be zero drag. That's just the brand that we have that we really like. If you don't want to use that particular brand, we recommend the next one that we recommend is Now, Now brand, N-O-W. And they sell that on Amazon and, and, and other places. But Now is the second one that Travis really likes. Okay, so there's still 130 calories in this medium chain triglycerides. And there's also a lot of noise out there about MCT oils. Oh, use it, use it in your coffee, use it in your shakes, take it as a supplement. I'm just gonna have to say no, no, no to all of those. We do not use it for those reasons. See, the people that are out there trying to sell the hype of MCT oil aren't necessarily in the same nutritional situation that we're in. We're wanting to burn body fat, right? So we don't, we don't, we, we just put our blinders on. We ignore the noise out there. We use medium chain triglyceride for three reasons only. Cooking in a pot, a pan, grill, however you want to cook. Recipes. If it calls for oil, you can use medium chain triglyceride. Three would be to make approved salad dressings. Those are the three ways we're going to use MCT oil. Please never feel like you need to get it in. There is no getting it in. We're not taking it as a supplement, okay? We're just using it for cooking, a swap in recipes, and making approved salad dressings. We're not making bulletproof coffee with it. We're not putting it in shakes. We're not just taking it randomly. So if you're not using it for one of those three purposes, then you're, you're not you just don't need it right then, okay? And somebody asked me one night, well, why would I choose to use something like a medium chain triglyceride that has 130 calories in it versus a zero calorie cooking spray? It was a great question. Well, medium chain triglycerides have a muscle preserving effect 
and we are into preserving our muscles on shibboleth. If you are doing those combinations like we teach you, you're going to be preserving muscles while you're losing, losing weight, okay? Because, um, you know, a thousand calories of Moose Tracks ice cream and a thousand calories of chicken and broccoli are not created the same. They don't do the same thing for your body. Okay. So we want to make sure that we are preserving muscles and MCT has a muscle preserving effect. It also has a metabolism building effect. What does that mean? It heats up quickly when it burns up. That's why it doesn't have any propensity to be on your body as fat because it burns up so quickly. It's a shorter less dense fat lipid and a long chain triglycerides, a longer, denser fat lipid. And so it has a little bit of uh, heating up effect. So you'll burn a few extra calories, but just because I said that you would burn a few extra calories does not mean take it as a supplement. Cause think about this. See, when you use 130 calories in one tablespoon of MCT oil, some of that's going to burn up in the cooking process and not even get in your body. Okay. And this MCT, oh, this is very important. When you're cooking, cook on low to medium heats because it will set off your smoke detector if you cook on high heat. Um, Sherry, I use Brummel, B-R-U-M-M-E-L, and brown yogurt butter. It's delicious. And it's, um, it's one tablespoon of that is 45 calories, which takes up most of your condiment. Y'all, we'll talk about condiments tomorrow. Take about most of your condiment, but it kind of depends on what I'm doing with it, Sherry, as to whether or not I choose to use that or the, I can't believe it's not butter spray. All right, we've got four slides left, but they go super fast. We're about to wrap this whole thing up. So you want to remain in EFB as often as possible. EFB stands for efficient, efficient fat burning. So think about this. We're striving for perfect days, but planned or unplanned, a holiday is coming. But now you know what to do. You have a plan. You just get right back to business doing the right things. After a holiday, it takes two perfect days to get back into efficient fat burning. When you get back into efficient fat burning, you just want to string as many efficient fat burning days together as you can. And then planned or unplanned, a holiday's coming. Then you get right back to business. So it's a cycle. It's a wonderful life cycle, lifestyle cycle that is much better than what I know personally for me I was doing before. So this is a much better life cycle. When we are in EFB, our body is going to burn fat, which is just stored energy waiting to be burned for the energy that we need rather than easily accessible sources of energy, such as unapproved oils and starchy and sugary carbs. See, if we're giving our body unapproved oils and unapproved starchy and sugary carbs, it's gonna go to that first. It may get everything that it needs from there. Therefore, it has no reason to get to the stored energy, but we want to access the stored energy. So you don't give it unapproved oils and unapproved starchy and sugary carbs and you eat in the right food combinations, you do the right portions. And so EFB is a wonderful thing. <clears throat> okay, what is the fat bus? The fat bus is insulin. I want you to think about this. Children, you know, as they go to school, they walk out of their house, they stand at their, the end of their driveway, or maybe they walk up to the front of their neighborhood and they're standing there. They're waiting on the bus to come by. The bus comes by and picks them up and takes them to, to their destination, which is the school. Well, insulin is like that bus. If insulin is out in your body at the same exact time as uh, fat, it's going to go pick up the fat like it's the little kids. And it's going to take them to the destination, which many, many people say butt and gut. Some people say arm. Some people say face. Wherever your destination is, it takes it there. And so that's why we have to be very diligent in controlling this insulin. But Travis has figured out how we can do this in a way that we still love and enjoy what we eat. So insulin is the fat bus. Insulin is a growth hormone, a fat storage hormone. Insulin increases appetite. And so have you ever eaten ice cream, then wanted chips, then wanted a cookie, and then wanted a pickle? And you're like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? 
Insulin will send your appetite off the charts. That's why it's very important to control that. After an insulin release, fat storage will occur for up to 48 hours, meaning you're out of EFB. Hence the two days to get back into EFB because it'll take about that long for that insulin to dissipate back out of your body. Your body will also use up any sugar stores that you got picked up on a holiday, okay? After the fat bus has been on its rounds, it takes two perfect days to get back into EFB. What are you going to eat this week? Well, hopefully you can go into lap one of Fast Track and start methodically working your way through those little, those little check boxes, okay? Because you're going to find in those spots meal ideas and food lists for lean proteins, fibers, carbs, and et cetera. Make a list of seven favorite lean proteins, seven favorite fibrous carbs. And just like you were in elementary school and your teacher said match something from one column with something from the other column. If you want to eat 96% lean ground beef together with green beans, then pick that. If you want chicken and broccoli, pick that. If you want pork tenderloin and cauliflower, pick that. So it's one from one column and one from the other. You Technically, you could use anything on any of the advanced combination charts, but that would be a simple way to get started. If you've got, your MC, got some MCT oil, then you can pick that up um, and cook it with that. Throw in a few meal replacements for simplicity. If you are eating Pop-Tarts now, you're going to have to figure out what kind of void replacement might work for a Pop-Tart. If you're eating cereal now, you might either want to switch or figure out what kind of cereals works. We've got to figure out which meal replacements are going to be there for that simplicity. And um, yes, Leah, it is. Um, and then... Keep it super simple in the beginning. It, you may be eating simpler meals than you have in the beginning. I mean, excuse me, than what you were eating before Shibboleth. But just eat those simple meals and know that it's, and when you watch the um, Facebook groups and all kinds of things and you see what other people are eating, that you can branch out too. Now, Leah, if you process that venison with fat in it, it would no longer be a lean protein. So venison is a lean protein as long as it is 96% lean. If you were to process it with additional meats, you'd want to keep it between 93 and 95.9% lean and call it a protein plus fat. So it really depends on how much fat is processed in it. And then take advantage of our awesome, awesome, um, resources. I'm not going to read through all this. I'm going to pop over to Fast Track and show you where you want to be, okay? But welcome, welcome to the Shibboleth family. It is a wonderful, wonderful place. Um, I lost 50 pounds. Um, it took me about five months, and now I have kept that off for two years, and I am so thrilled about it. I love it. I love knowing my daily disciplines, my standards, what I need to accomplish every single day. Okay, so Fast Track is where you start. And Fast Track is not just 14 little videos. It's an, it's like these little laps, okay? And it's kind of, look, you can see it's like a week's time. All right, so I don't actually go over lap one and lap two in a webinar because these are things that you need to do on your own. There's no, there's nothing I can show you really. But what I did was I create a little tutorial video. So there's a tutorial video right here for you to watch, okay? But when you come to the little task, your boxes will be unchecked. And then you just hover your mouse, or if you're on a phone or a tablet or an iPad, you can lightly touch the information I at the end. That black box is going to pop up. Just like you were in school, if your teacher gave you homework, you would expect that she also gave you the instructions for the homework. The black box is the instructions for that task. Just real simple. Why are you doing that task? And is there anything special you need to know about completing that task? Then you just click the link, you do the task, and you come back and you check the box. And then from right here, welcome packet and guidelines all the way down to meal plan worksheet, that's food ideas, lots of food lists and food ideas. You're going to want to dig into that. I also like to call that your printables. That's all your new member welcome stuff. So you want to print all of that. If you are a Facebook user, there's a group, page, group, group. You want to be in those, okay? Takes about 30 seconds. This list may look like it's long, but it's some of them only take just a few seconds. Now, some of them a little bit longer, but um, don't get overwhelmed in doing it. You just, this is an organized way for you to methodically work through learning it all. And then 
this very last task right here, make your first journal entry. You may not do that today. You know, so if you do that Monday or Tuesday, just come back and check that box whenever you've done that. And then in lap two, this is a very important lap. I like to call this lap dotting the I's and crossing the T's in getting your account set up the way that you want it to do. You want to confirm your email, find your ideal weight, complete a full body assessment. You want to complete your profile, making sure that you record your starting weight and starting measurements. Please take your starting measurements. So many people don't and then they lose weight and they are bummed that they can't see how many inches they've lost, okay? Because that's fun to know too. It's really, really fun. You're on an awesome journey and we are leading you through the process of creating a really wonderful journey, but you got to listen and do the things, okay? So please go ahead and do that. And then take a before front and side picture. So many people do not want to do this, but they are always bummed if they don't because they've been hiding behind other people in pictures or not being in pictures at all. And they can't find a really good front and side picture before when they lose weight and then they want to show off. They don't have this. Okay, so do it. Nobody is going to see this. This goes into your account for you. Nobody else is going to see it. You got to define your why. There is going to be a day that you wake up and you don't want to do this anymore. You're like, I don't want to do this today. Or maybe it doesn't hit you one morning, but it hits you one afternoon. You're like, I'm tired. I want to eat a bag of chips. You're going to come over here to your why. Why are you doing this? And what I like to suggest people to do is to create your why about every three to six months, go back in there and add to it or clarify, but never remove your first reasons because you want to always be able to look back and see that. And then throughout the week at 730, I'm going to be going over lap three through lap seven with you very specifically because it shows you how to use pieces and parts of the website, your resources and tools. And I like to shorten your learning curve on doing all of that. So that's what we're going to do. If you happen to miss a, a night, they're already recorded. They're right here. If you were to get really super excited over tomorrow, like Labor Day, you're off work and you're thinking, I want to watch these videos. They're already there from last week. So they're just there. And if you, but if you don't click this box here until you've watched all seven of them, okay? This simple food combining website link is the link I'm going to use tomorrow night to teach class. And then we want to make sure that you have taken the fast track quiz and earned your first badge. It's going to say fast track complete on it, but it's technically not complete until you've done all seven laps of fast track. But that's just the way it is right now. I've got to get the developer to work on changing that. But why do I want you to take your fast track quiz and earn your first badge before we get to lap three? So that you can have the full food library opened up to you. If you're not seeing, if you go over to the food library and you're just seeing little lists, it's just because you don't have the full access yet because you got to take that quiz to get full access. It's better to know what you're doing when you're looking at the food library and kind of understand what that is trying to tell you. But when you pass that quiz, it'll give you full access to the food library, the recipe library, and the restaurant guide. So if, it, if I hope that you're sitting there right now going, oh, good, this is awesome. That's just a very organized, methodical way to look through everything. Well, I have enjoyed spending Sunday night with you. I will be back here tomorrow night, 730 for the fast track on simple food combining one hour on the topic of combinations, food combinations. Tonight has been the lifestyle overview. Tomorrow morning, about 730, 740-ish, I will be on the public page for a focus and a morning motivation and daily devotion. So please join me there and Oh, you're welcome. Lynn, I love it. Thank you for that compliment too. So sweet. Thank you for being here and supporting. That's awesome. Thank you, Lynn. And then last thing I want to say before tonight is over. This is my prayer for you every night. Keep them safe day and night. Give them courage, strength, and might. Night, everybody.